loaded with paint and I thinned it with water. So I make a, a stroke here and another stroke. I turn my brush over to get the rest of the paint out of the brush and then I'm going to dip up some more paint, thin paint. I haven't, normally I would take the paper down, but I haven't done it with you guys because I think you need an adult to help. but not flat. I keep getting brown in my brush. It's not gonna matter in the long run because I'm going to, we're painting a, a grove of trees. So I use my brush just now to pick up some of that paint. I'm gonna use my brush to pick up some of this paint. Go back over it with blue. Okay, now you can let that dry or you can get your hair dryer, put it on low, place it on low, hold your paper so that you don't blow your paper away. My paper is moving around, but uh, I'm going to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So my paper is beginning to buckle and so will yours. And that's why we normally we will just tape the paper down. But it's still going to work, no problem. My paper, I had my paper uh, pretty wet. Now the thing with watercolor, let me say this. So whatever medium you use, you want your art for now, in the beginning, to look like that medium because each medium has certain qualities and certain, uh, a range of capabilities. And so if you're going to do a watercolor painting, the beauty in a watercolor is the water, <laughs> okay? So uh, we are painting with water. So we're just tinting the water, if you will, uh, with colors uh, that come from the earth. And uh, so for me, painting can be a very meditative, spiritual uh, undertaking. And uh, so you want it to look like water. You know, we don't want a watercolor to look like you did it with a marker. Not at this stage. Later on, you do whatever you want to, make it look any kind of way you want to. But I'm trying to teach you the basic principles of art making. And I'm more concerned with your eyes and your hand. Really, it's your eyes, your hand, and your heart. And your heart is your mind, okay? Because that's how you infuse power. You can put power into your art. And one of the reasons why I like to do art is because I'm able to express who I am as an individual 
through my art. No matter what I do, I can express who I am. And uh, that's why I was born. This, that's what I was born to do. And some of you was born to do the same thing. Okay, so I'm letting this dry. Let your paper dry until um, it's sort of damp. And uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint a horizon line. And I'm trying to decide what color. I think I'm going to use yellow. So I'm getting the same paintbrush. So uh, this is my particular way of, of making art, okay? Other artists would do this totally different. So the best I can do is show you how I do it because I know how I do it <laughs> okay I just want to know where the ground is going to be and so I'm going to allow the ground to come up about one-third of the way of the sheet of paper and the reason why I'm using yellow is that when I paint green the yellow is going to blend in nicely with the green the ground is going to have grass on it. But if I use if I use yellow now, then I can sort of create a horizon line. Now the horizon line is as far as the, the eye can see. But this is not, you don't even really have to consider this a horizon line. You can just consider it as the ground. Now I want to now, I, I believe that it's a good idea that when you make art, now, and I think you can get another brush. Let's get a, a bright, this is called a bright, and it's like a flat brush, but it's sort of long. And what I want to do is paint, and I think I need a brush that's a little wider. I don't want to use a brush as wide as the one I use for the, um, wash see the difference in the size and the reason why I'm, I'm getting a smaller brush is I want a little bit more control of details so now let's do this since we live in in Chattanooga since I live in Chattanooga Tennessee in the south Chattanooga is very hilly. So every time I do a landscape, I want to put a ridge, a ridge or something in my landscape. So I'm going to get some, uh, um, I'm gonna get a little bit of green. I'm gonna put it over here in my tin. Then I'm gonna get a little brown and I just want to make the green a little bit darker. So when I mix a little, just a little bit of brown with the green, it gets darker. And just create a ridge or a mountain in the background. And do that with uh, using the wash technique as well. And you see that darkness, it'll make it look like dark green. This is going to be, to be in the background as well. Now, remember kids, it's okay to mess up. Sometimes when you make a mistake, your art comes out better. Things can happen that you did not uh, uh, plan. And that is good when that happens. So you see, we're painting the background now with washes. When I paint the green, this dark green over the, the blue, uh, the blue shows through as well. Okay, this is good enough. I'm going to go back with some water. I like how this side of my picture is looking. Something I did not plan on, but I don't like this hard line here this edge 
of this green and the light blue, I'm going to soften it. And the reason why I like it soft, because there's a lot of, in the mornings here in Tennessee, especially in the mountains, you can see fog. So since I thought about fog, see my brush, I'm using my brush as a sponge. I'm picking up paint. Also, I'm, I keep dipping my brush in the water so that I can thin the paint in order to pick it up or to move it around. So we are painting, we are not coloring. That's very important that you remember that, kids. You are painting, and painting is about paint. Okay? So we're painting, we are not coloring. Now I'm going to get the green, some of this green, and we're going to do a, what's called a scumbling technique. And I don't know, see, I'm, <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. But I want my green to be pretty clean. I'm probably going to mix some yellow with it. So I'm going to take, what I'm doing is I'm cleaning out my palette. Oops, got my brush. <laughs> I'm cleaning out my palette, see. I have some brown here. I hope I don't stick my paint in brown. I have some purple. But I'm going to use this area here. I'm going to get my brush load it with water. I'm going to dip it into the yellow. Uh oh, I have some green on my brush. It's okay, but this is what I'm trying to do anyway. I'm trying to get this color. I didn't clean my brush out good. So I'm putting a lot of water in my brush so I can lift a lot of paint. And now since my yellow is turning green, I'm going to clean it right now with my paper towel. So now it's yellow again. You have to pay attention to what's happening. So when you make art, don't be in a hurry. We're going kind of fast because we only have a limited amount of time here, but don't be in such a big hurry. Okay. I started a painting last week. I just, I just did the sketch and that's all I've done so far. Now I'm going to dip my brush in the water. Every time I change colors, children remember, every time you change colors, dip your brush into the water and clean it. So now I have a clean brush. I'm dipping up some, some of this dark green. I'm going to put it in the yellow to make sort of hopefully a yellowish green. And hopefully a lighter green will make it appear to be in, in the daytime. So I'm going to do a technique called scumbling. You can use this brush or if some of you kids, let's see if I have a fan brush. I don't know if I have a fan brush in here. I didn't give you guys a fan brush, but some of you guys may have your own brushes. I don't have a fan brush. I can, I'll bring one next time. It's a fun brush to use. But I'm just going to use the edge of my brush. And you have to think. Think grass. As you think, so are you. How, whatever you think in your mind, that's who you are. That's what you'll do. So if you think, I'm a great artist, guess what? You are a great artist. You will be a great artist. If you think I can do this, guess what? You can do this. So whatever you think, if I think mountains, I paint mountains. If I think grass, I'm going to paint grass. So we have to use our imagination. So I'm using the point of my brush. And the reason why I'm using a brush, this type of brush is because uh, I don't have a whole lot of time. <laughs> so watch closely. I'm using the edge of my brush. I'm just going to make a mark. I don't like that mark. I'm going to get a different, I'm going to make the mark up. You have to barely touch the paper. It's going to be difficult for you to do this. 
You're going to barely touch the paper. You're going to scumble, but think grass. You're going to make a lot of little, it's like when we draw, we make hatch marks. We're using the edge of the brush. Okay. Don't blend the brush. You see, I'm picking the brush up and I'm leaving some yellow. That's very important. I'm trying to get, use my brush hairs. I want to see the hairs of this brush. Now, if I used an older brush, and you guys, see this brush is so smooth, it's difficult to do. But if I, if I used an older brush, I could separate the hairs. I, my problem right now, I've been taking too good care of my brushes. <laughs> so we just continue with this brush. But think grass. See how I'm going in lines? It's like a horizontal. So you just barely touch the brush. This is called scumbling. And think in your mind, this is going to be grass. And then it may come out looking like grass. Leave yellow. Don't make this flat. Don't press down hard with the brush. Take your time. See, now you can see how my, the hairs of my brush are beginning to separate here. That makes it easier for me to do what I'm trying to do. So I'm just trying to make a bunch of lines fast. Now what I did then, I just got some darker. So you can see the hairs of my brush now that I've kind of messed my brush up a little bit. I'm getting some darker green. I'm going to intersperse this darker green with the light green. So it, hopefully it'll look like light is hitting the grass in the foreground. So those of you who are my students, you know I said that the, uh, we're going to do a background, a middle ground, and a foreground. The mountain is the middle ground, and we're going to put some uh, trees there, and that's going to be middle ground. Now, if you get some paint, your brush mixed up with a little brown or something. I'm going to do it on purpose this time. So I got I have brown on my brush. It, it works. In this case, you can have a few different colors because remember, there's dirt under the grass. But you have to control how much paint is in your brush. It's up to you. You are in control. This is your painting. It's not mine. Your painting won't look exactly like mine because you are an individual. And what you create matters. It's important that you be you. So I'm going to get some dark green to just show that some areas there's not a lot of light hitting. Now, believe it or not, this is still abstract painting because remember, all painting and drawing is abstract because it's on a flat sheet of paper or canvas or wood or cardboard or whatever you're using. If it's not an actual, actual thing, then it is a painting of a landscape. I'm going to mix a little brown in here again just to get a little darker colors. You also can mix your brown. Remember like we mixed the brown and the green? Let's do that again. You may already, you, you may still have some brown in your green. So I'm going to put some green over here in the palette to the side. Mix it with that brown and I, I'll use, I'll get a dark green. Mix a little bit more green. So 
So the dark green makes it look like there are some places where the sunlight is not getting in. I'm going to do something else with some dark green. Well, maybe not. Let's see. The yellow is important. The yellow underneath this green will keep the picture from getting too dark. Now we're getting ready in a minute for the coup de gras. So we are, coup de gras means it's like uh, we're going to make, hopefully, make this picture really stand out and sing. Now I'm going to use this brush here. You can use a brush that's smaller, but I want you to use a flat brush for the next part when we finish with the grass. When I say finish, that don't mean we're actually finished, but we'll stop on the grass and go back to the grass. So, uh, okay, I'm going to make this area that's close to the horizon line darker. So I'm using the dark green. We won't see so much yellow. I'm going to get some more brown. Watch, I'm going to put some brown in here. I really want it to be darker. And you'll see why later. Now I'm trying to uh, indicate where my trees are going to be. So wherever the trees are, uh, we're not going to see the top of the trees, by the way. We're going to see the ground. That's what we're painting now. This represents the ground. See how dark that's getting now that I added brown to it? Leave some regular green on there though. Don't paint, don't make, don't, don't make this part black. I just want it darker. And we want to stagger things. I don't want it like bands of color. We don't want it to be like bands of color. We want the darkness to be sort of haphazard because the um, I'm going to raise this little part up a little bit so it's not so straight because I want it to look like a no a no like a grassy no so raise it up I'm still thinking grass and I'm thinking shadows so the area that's closer to the bottom of the paper is lighter. You see that? I want to keep it that way. So when your eyes see the yellow and the yellow green, it will make the, the bottom of the paper appear to be closer to you, hopefully. I always say hopefully because you know, we never know how it's going to come out. We're just trying. Every time we paint or draw, it's an experiment, okay? And it is okay to fail at this. It is okay to make mistakes, but you will never learn if you never make mistakes. You find out, sometimes mistakes, you can use your mistakes because you can say, hey, it didn't work for that, but that mistake will work for something else <laughs> that I'm making. So we're not trying to be we're doing, we're giving a hundred percent though. We're trying our best. We never quit, we never give up because we keep a, a positive attitude in Splash. We're making art, so we can have a positive attitude. Don't judge yourself. I'm the only one who can judge, you know, in, in Splash class either myself or my wife and because we are professional artists and the only, we critique and we judge in order to make you better we we always can uh, show you a way to make your art better something that you'll be proud of and like I was saying last time 
Most kids do these um, projects b better than me, especially the abstract ones, the non-objective ones. Okay, so now we have some dark area and we have light area. So now the eye can slow down and travel, hopefully in this direction. This, the eye sees the yellow first because yellow is a warm color. Now, here's the fun part. And these classes are for artists of all ages. And I'm well aware of that since we are doing live studio. I don't know who's watching. So it may be one of my 18 year olds watching. So what we're going to use, I'm going to use this brush. You could use a wider brush, but I suggest don't use a brush that's too wide right now. And I'm going to get some green. I'm going to mix some green with brown again. But the last time we did that to, to make dark green. This time we're going to do that to make brown, uh, a dark brown. Well, we're not going to do the dark brown yet. Let's do a light brown first. I'll show you, I'll t show you why later. We're going to paint the trees twice. So this is how we're going, we're going to paint the trees up the way they grow from bottom, from the trunk up. Okay. I do need a wider brush for my first tree. So um, we're going to paint the tree in a brown, sort of a light brown, because we're going to use thin paint. And then we're going to go back over it with that dark greenish brown. Should we do it that way? Why not? Trying to find a brush that's pretty decent. This is a little bit wider. Kids, don't you get, don't use your huge brush because it, it'll be difficult for you. But I just want to. I'd rather you use a smaller brush. Don't do not use the round brush. Use your flat, bright brush. Your your flat or your bright. It looks like a square or a rectangle. And I'm going to dip it into the brown and I'm going to bring the brown over here, place it on my palette. I want my brown sort of thin. I don't want it too thick because I need to be able to go back over it. And the reason why I'm doing it this way is I want two shades in my tree two basic shades. So the first time we paint the trees, it's going to be light. Now, use the flat part of your brush, watch me, from bottom to top, and then begin to raise your brush up so it gets a little bit thinner. Now I'm going to paint this trunk. So you can see through the tree right now, it's okay. We're going to go back over it, like I said. I'm going to use the edge of my brush. This is called a, um, this brush is it's like somebody took scissors and cut it in a slant, see, to do one of the uh, branches. And then I'm going to do a limb. I used the corner of my brush. Let's do another one. We're going to, it's a grove of trees, remember? I'm going to do a brush, uh, a tree right next to it and a little bit behind it. I'm just going to, it's going to be thinner, so I'm just going to use the edge of the brush and go up like that. I want to bring this first tree down a little bit. So I'm going to bring it down. I'm going to do another brush, another tree I'm going to let it bend like that. So my brown mixed in with the green a little bit, it's okay. 
Then I'm going to do another tree that goes up like this. Okay, I want it to be a little wider. It gets thinner because I raise my brush up off the paper as I make that stroke. I'm going to do another tree that's pretty wide. I'm going to use the flat part of my brush. I'm laying my brush down so it's flat. Then I begin to raise it up so it gets thin. Now I'm going to do make a, a, a branch. So are you getting this? So what you're going to do now, this, these are, this is like painting ghost trees. I don't want my paint thick because I don't want my trees to look just thick brown right now. I'm going on, I'm just going to use the edge and do some skinny trees. So I want you to do it now. You can do it faster. You can do skinny trees like that. Do a bunch of them. And then think about details in the background. Skinny. I'm going to go over this one because I make it a little darker. Now all we're going to do is trace. Now I'm going to do the, the trees on the other side, on the right hand side. I'm going to do a tall one, skinny one here. I'm going to paint a wide one here. I'm going to go down lower on the paper to make it look like it's kind of close to you. Then I'm going to paint a branch that goes off like that. See how quick this is when, once you get the technique down? You can't go too slow and you can't go too fast with your stroke. Do another tree. The more lines you have for trees, the better. I'm going to do another wide tree here. This one is going to be the widest, so I'm going to use two strokes. See? And this. I'm going to bring it down even further on the paper. I want it to be wide. Now we're going over these trees. So they don't have to be perfect. Then put some trees in the background. Put some branches in the background. See, each one of these lines represent trees. Now don't have them all level. Have them at different levels. See how I'm starting here higher on the paper than this one? This is so much fun, and you guys can do this. If you don't do it today, you do it next time. <laughs> okay? So practice makes perfect. So I have a grove of trees here. And uh, so now what I want to do. Yes, I want to show you. I can't wait to show you. So I'm going to mix this brown with the green. So it's going to be like a dark brown, a greenish brown. I could also mix a little purple in here, which I'm not going to do yet. I may decide to. Or blue to make the, the brown even darker. I'm going to start here with the tree that I started with. I'm going to see if this works. I'm going to go over it. Now, if you have a dryer, it will work better if you dry. Now that works, but if these were drier, dry, dry it a little bit. So what I'm going to do as I paint these, I'm going to be willing to leave some of the light brown on the left hand side. So when I watch how I paint this branch. See how I left a little brown there? I'm going to go back up and get this. So the light brown is going to be where the light is hitting the tree. So I'm painting really on the right hand side of all the trees I made. See, I just painted the right hand side. Let your trees get a little wider at the bottom. We're going to make some more branches, but let's do these trunks first. I want my trunk, this first tree, I want it to be a little darker. I want my trunk to be a little bit wider at the bottom. So, 
I just go back in. Nice. Remember, I'm making my strokes to the right, to the right hand side of the strokes I've already made. And just do that for every, every one of your strokes. It's like tracing them. Paint from bottom to top, dark brown. And in a minute, we're going to use our round brush. This one, I just want this one to be all dark. We're going to make the ones on this side a little bit darker. On the right hand side, make them a little darker. We're going to put some more branches, but we're going to use a smaller brush to do that. Now, I'm going to make this stroke on the right hand side. Do the same for the branch. I can't wait to see your pictures. Be sure, Splash students, to text me or email me or message me. You can also message me. Now, with this tree here, I really want to show at the bottom the roots. I'm going to get some brown. I'm, I, want, uh, I need to mix some green with it or some blue. I'm going to, right now I'm just going to mix green with it like we've been doing. And make this kind of like branch out a little bit. Okay, it's too green. I need it darker. I want it to look more like a dark brown. See how I'm letting it flare at the bottom. I'm going to do it, do it to all of these, but this one especially. I'm painting the right hand side. Look how much uh, light brown I'm leaving. Because what? Look at what I'm going to do. I'm going to like, since this is a little closer to you, I'm using the edge of my brush. And I'm thinking tree bark. I'm thinking wood. That's what's in my mind. Now I'm doing the other trees in the background. Painting the right, the right side of it. Okay, now let's do the... All the rest of the, the uh, bottom of the trees. Some of them can stop abruptly. Let's do some, look, I'm going to do some in the background on top of the um, horizon line. Matter of fact, I'll just go ahead and get the round brush so you guys can see what I'm going to do. I want to get this brown down and then we're going to, uh, you're going to practice making thin lines. Mix the brown with a little bit of green just to make the brown a little muddy looking. I don't want it to look dark green. It can look dark green. That's another technique that you can use. Um, it's, a mono, there's, it's a monochromatic monochrome technique. But so it doesn't really matter if your brown is a little bit too green. It's still going to look nice. I'm just going to put some trees in the background starting at the uh, horizon right there, see? And then you can put some that fall down below the horizon. It just It sort of makes it look like it's going back in space. Now, since we can't see the top of the trees, but we can see some little branches. Now, if you get your round brush and, and Many of you have a brush that's even skinnier than this one. I'm going to use the, the wide one, but I want you to use your skinniest brush, okay? And we're going to paint some limbs. And the limbs are going to, to be pretty high on the trees. 
use the tip of your brush. And the reason why I want to use my wide brush, don't you use, this is, this round brush is a number six. I don't want you to use a number six. I want you to use a much smaller, the smallest one you can get, you can find. The smallest one. Because you need a point. And I'm using the number six because my picture is going to look sort of like yours. Because I'm making it difficult. Barely touch the point of your round brush on the paper. Don't do not press down and just bet lightly. Let's start painting some thin branches that go every kind of way on this picture. You don't even have to know what tree it's connected to. I just want some skinny wavy lines. And I want hundreds of them. So you can't, if you can't paint slow. Don't paint it like this. It's hard to paint a skinny line slow. But you know when you see trees, you see thousands of lines, right? So your lines can be wavy like that. You don't need to know what tree these lines belong to. I'm also going to paint some more trees that's shorter in the background like that. We're just trying to get detail. And after we paint these branches, we're going to put a little bit more green on it and we'll be done. I'm barely touching the paper. They can be wild. We want a lot of them. See how I'm painting them? I'm barely touching the paper, just the tip of the brush. And every now and then, I'll paint another tree in the background. See, whenever I'm painting uh, perpendicular, it's a tree. I'm just trying to make this look like detail, a lot of detail. Remember, we do small details last when you're drawing or painting. These are a bunch of branches. Whatever looks good to you. Your branches can be brown or dark brown. Green, it could be green too. They could be green. Paint a bunch of them though, a lot of them. Because if you was in a forest or something, outdoors in a landscape, they would look very complicated. It's, it looks complicated, but it's not because you're making up everything. You're making up these branches here. You're saying this is a branch, that's a branch. Just the tip of your brush. This is good practice. You may not be able to do skinny lines yet. See, I'm using a wide brush. If I use a smaller brush, and this is a pretty large round brush, and splash kids in your uh, paint set, you have a very small brush. If you barely touch the paper, you're going to get some skinny lines. Dark brown and light brown, it doesn't matter. If you wonder how the branches should look, just, no, you probably don't have lines in your hand. But us old folks, we have lines in our hands, so look at your daddy's hands or your grandpa's hands. It's also like painting the veins of a leaf. Usually, the shapes that we see in nature are repeated. You see how the more lines you get, the more it begins to look realistic. The last thing we're gonna paint is green. But I'm still painting lines. When we paint, when we start using green, we're going to try to put this green on thick. So your paper is going to need to be dry. If you have a hair dryer, you can go get your hair dryer now. If your mom asks your mother or grandmother if you can use her hair dryer. <laughs> Child, what you want my hair dryer for? I'm painting. <laughs> Art. Art class. 
Lord have mercy. Well, I'm sure they're gonna love your art. See, if you looked at this picture now, and if you, if you didn't know how we got here, it seems like it's complicated. But you can see that if you just use a process, do one step at a time, it's not so complicated. I'm mixing some more green, I mean brown, dark brown by mixing green with brown. You can also mix red with brown or blue. Well, blue with brown really makes it look dark. You can mix blue with brown or purple. I may, I may mix some blue or brown just so you can see what it looks like. Usually when I paint in acrylics or oils, if I want a dark brown, I'll mix it with blue. Now, if I mix blue with brown, this tree, I'm thinking about making this tree and that tree really dark and maybe this one parts of this one. So I'll, I'll do that and show you what happens. So I'm going to get some of this blue here, just a little bit. I'm going to mix it into the brown. Now if it looks blue, it's not correct. So you see how this looks blue? I want it to look brown. I want it to look black, dark brown. We're almost finished. I need a little bit more blue. Yeah. But time sure flies. So I got this dark brown here. See, it looks almost black. I'm going to go back here in the background. See how that looks black? See, I don't want too many of that, too much of that though. I like it better like this. But I just wanted you to see what happens if I mix blue with brown. We get a very dark brown that looks black. Now since I have made this dark brown here, I need to do it somewhere else on the paper. So I'm going to put a little bit of this dark brown on this side of the, the bottom part of my trunk. Now this is, the next part is going to be difficult to do, but you need patience. It's not so difficult if you have patience. You may not finish it. When I finish, you may have to keep working a little bit after we go offline. And that's because I have a hair dryer. Okay. So what I'm going to do now, clean my brush out. I'm going to dry this. It don't have to be bone dry. Now listen closely to my instructions. Listen very closely. Pay close attention. I'm going to get my round brush again. And we're going to make a lot of marks just like we did with the branches. So I'm going to, I, I just want my brush to be damp. I don't want it to be wet. So like if I dip my brush in, in the, the water and it's dripping like that, it's dripping, it's too wet. If I touch it, and I have water on my fingers too wet. I want it dry. I'll show you why. Because I want to use some thick paint. So I'm going to use the green that we've already used. So my green is, is tacky now. It's tacky. It's not bone dry. It's not too wet. I hope your green is not too wet. If there's water sitting in your green, your green is too thin. I want my green to be thick. And look what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the side of my brush now. And I'm going to scumble again. I'm going to dab it with the side. Not the point, but the side. Watch. 
and those are going to be the leaves. And haphazardly, I'm going to put those all over the picture. Also, what you can do, you can use, you can uh, do it, use yellow. Want your brush dry. Your yellow should be tacky. You can put some yellow dispersed in that. But for now, let's do the green side of the brush. You can also put a little brown in your green. You can use dark green like we did before. It's always good to just change things up a little bit. See, now I'm going to get some dark green. Now this is not thin enough. I mean, it's too thin, not thick enough. So I'm going to squeeze some of the paint out of my brush. My paper's moving. Just the side of the brush. The brush is still too wet. So those are the leaves. The leaves can be in front of the trees. Make sure some of your leaves are in front of the trees. And they can, the leaves can be sort of low on the trees. Now, when you change up, make, make your uh, green darker. It just makes it more interesting. You can also use brown. Let me put a little brown on the. I'm doing the same thing with the brown, I'm using the flat side of the brush, not the tip. See? And you can put some of the ground, brown on top of the green. It'll make the green look darker. You could use yellow if you want your leaves to look lighter. Every now and then I have to wet my brush because the paint gets to so dry that it won't come off my brush. So I'm putting some brown here. I'm going to go back with, with green. I'm going to do a yellow green as well. And you're going to continue to do that. I'm going to do a few more and then I'm going to say goodbye to you. Now, do as many of these leaves as you want to. The more, the merrier, okay? The more, the merrier. And remember that art is for everyone. Mix, you can put some yellow in here. And don't forget to sign your picture, by the way, and send me some uh, photographs of your picture. Well, it's been fun. That's going to end another day of painting for us, Splash Live. Hope to see you again Thursday at uh, 5 o'clock. Remember, artists for everyone. Bye-bye.